<laughs> Join us! Join us! Okay, okay. Now that I've watched this movie, I can safely say I have a tree phobia, my guy. What about you? Are we scared of trees? The back door. Join us. Join us. <laughs> you can cut it. I'm back. Okay, for real though, now that we're here, uh, we watched Evil Dead, the original. <laughs> After watching Evil Dead rise as two losers who have never seen the franchise prior. I th found out that's untrue. I have seen the 2013 movie. You I didn't know. You don't remember it. I didn't remember it. it. I just, didn't remember he it. He goes, is there a movie that ends with blood raining everywhere? Yeah, congratulations. You remember one scene. Well, I remember going, I remember there being a big thing about the cellar. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, yeah, it's the, the cabin. Reboot. It's the reboot. Yeah, 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 yeah. one. Yeah. I'll be curious to see that movie again now. But um, we've never officially like sat down. No, we, we no, don't no, remember. no, 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 no. I was in college. You don't think I remember anything, let alone my grades. There we go. Well, here's the thing, though. We went in this freshly new eyes. I feel like I might have watched this when I was a wee lad. I said that last time. You're like, what are you, Scottish? Wee <laughs> Yeah, you made fun that of me. Sounds for, like me. Yeah, you made fun of me last time we did a podcast when I said that. But yeah, when I when I was young, I watched the first one probably, but I don't remember. I'm so funny. You're so annoying. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> funny. But now that we've watched, we can officially say we have watched the original. Yes. And and I've been thinking about watching this movie all week because we watched Evil Dead Rise. You yeah. Know, newcomers. And it was a good movie. A, so uh, like why not why not visit the whole franchise maggot mommy has my heart you know but like <laughs> uh but um you know i've been thinking like okay well we didn't really know i feel a lot of those down to earth references yeah down that, the earth the, like the my franchise mom, would be known for my mom bro was out here after we watched it she's like oh did you see this relation this relation this I'm like i didn't even like watch the other ones so she's like so your mom sat through this movie this, yeah, this she, movie she, and enjoyed it mm -hmm. yeah no no like what do you mean like, like the original? Yeah. Well, she watched it when she was young. Uh, classic. What I'm saying is, like, when she watched Evil Dead Rise, and she was telling me about all the things that relate to the past movies, and I'm like, I don't know, dude. I knew Chainsaw Shotgun. And Ash. And that's Blood. It. Yeah. Yeah. And that's literally it. But we've watched it. We are officially legends. We have watched <laughs> the movie. So, you know, it was made, what, 1983? Three? Okay, there's some weird stuff about this, and you know I'm not gonna be like a Wikipedia page for like the movies that we watch. I don't like. I don't necessarily like doing that. I I check. We check for the budgets. Yeah, yeah. And different things like that. But <laughs> I guess this movie was. I was not wrong when I said that there was a release of this movie in 1981, but it was for a specific theater of some kind. It's kind of weird. And then the it took full, two years. The full for... U.S. release came out. Um, That's in interesting. 83. That is. Very weird. Yeah, and then the... I'm not really sure exactly how it happened. I'm not sure if this has something to do with the fact that originally this movie was shot as like a short film uh, by Ramey, Campbell, and I think the producer. Okay. Um, at, in which to garner, like, you know, funding for the film. And I saw where it got like 90000 which the film has like a, I want to say a $350,000 budget, you know, for, for this, the film that we watched. I watched Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey yesterday. <laughs> Not related to this in the slightest, but I just brought that in because it had a budget of under 100000 and yikes. Now, right. granted, this was 350000 then. Yeah, in the in the 80s. Yes, so, so this was... Pretty good, actually. That That's a, that's a pretty sizable budget, all things considered. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, with that being said... Where do you want to begin with this movie? Bro, what I want to begin with this right, movie let's is... Start with our, our, let's start with our, our initial thoughts. Okay, so since we didn't know anything about this movie, I just went in to see Ash. That's all I'm like, all right, which yeah. we have learned, neither of us knew this, Ash Lee. Ash Lee, yeah. Not I'm, Ash, Ash Lee is the I love name. it. I think, it's, I, I think it's funny. And it works because when later in this podcast, stick around, we're going to talk about Final Girls again, and he's going on the list because his name's <laughs> Ashley. I... Honestly, I was fully, I like, I didn't even know his name was Ashley. I was fully prepared to throw him onto the list of final girls because I just think that's funny. And guess what? I think Bruce Campbell would be okay with it. Oh, yeah, he would. I think, I like, he seems like a pretty cool guy. And, uh, I just, I, lo I like how we didn't, either of us knew that. No, I just, didn't. He, she just goes, Ashley or whatever. And, we're like, and I was like, 
Ashley? Is that his sister's name or something? <laughs> and then, like, he... And, no. Straight up. So, we start off with, I think, the whole, like, camera... Or, you know, the classic. The, like, Deadites moving, where it's, like, the camera swaying yes, yes. through the woods. And we get all our characters driving cars, you know. Just, so... Character-wise, obviously we know Ash, Bruce Campbell. The other characters I know aren't really relevant that much, but any character specific that stood out to you that wasn't Ash? That wasn't? Okay, only, um, well, the other guy. Don't ask me his name. I couldn't tell you. Do you know his name? No, I don't know his name. Exactly. But like you pointed out that he mattered, so or you he's, liked him. No, I, I liked him. Well, I didn't like him. It's just he stood out to me. Okay. I, I didn't necessarily say I liked him. I just thought he was going to be... I, I had, in knowing what I know from Evil Dead Rise, that someone is going to be the one to get initially possessed. Yeah. I had him tagged from the start. That's who I thought it was. Oh, yeah. Be. Well, one thing I did know about this movie is because there was a girl was... in the cellar who really? was like possessed. So I knew gotcha. it was a girl originally anyway. Okay. But... Well, to me, he comes off as antagonistic. He's like, he's like, ah, your fucking horn doesn't work, and like, or your horn works. He's like, I'm not talking <laughs> yeah. to you, Jesus Christ. The two guys on the side of the road just be like, hey. And like, it's you think they lived? You think they lived to see? The oh next yeah, day? they're fine. That's they're gonna be in the best characters. They're in the, in the prequel. They I hope a, so. They're probably the ones who left the book there. <laughs> they're know. actually they're the ones that hid the book. Yeah, they're the ones that hid the book <laughs> and everything. Um, so okay. Book looking a lot smaller in this movie than Evil Dead Rise. Well, the different books, I, I different know. volumes. That's I, something to consider. You know? I know. And uh, interestingly enough, Evil Dead Rise. Minor spoiler, nothing crazy. They don't they don't destroy the book in Evil Dead Rise. No, that book's still going. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, no more spoilers for Evil Dead Rise. Go see the movie; it's pretty good. Um, anyway. So you talk about the opening opening scene. Did anyone stand out to you? Did any what from the opening moments of this movie stood out to you? Because I have other things to say, but more the opening scene, the, like before we get to the like, cabin, just in general, part. just the opening, you know, what? five ten yeah. minutes of the movie. What what stands out to you? Is this movie making an impact on you? No, <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be real it, honest with you. I'm sorry. Okay, I I don't think this movie is trash. Well, shut up. It's a classic for a reason. It's got a following, and I. I just think that, as cheesy as this movie is for being an 80s movie, you can't fault it for that. It's kind of hard. Well, But my thing is is that it gets fun, interesting in the later half. I think the first half is kind of painfully slow. I'll be real honest. Yeah, the second half was fun. I'll, I'll, say, it this, I'll say it this way. When Ash becomes the true protagonist of the movie yeah like the final person yes yeah. or at the very least the only one not incapacitated in some way that's when the movie gets interesting if you ever want to defeat bruce campbell slash ash by the way all you have to do is have a shelf oh my god dude you're good <laughs> don't invite that guy to a library book signing not definitely not the book of the dead because he's getting thrown around he's going through every shelf it doesn't matter um <laughs> uh, okay, you, you know what? You know what stood got, out to me. We got good energy. You know, you know I think we got some good energy you know what, today. You I know think. what stood out to me the most in this movie? What's that? Tree scene. Oh my god! You know, I nothing better than just going into a movie you have nothing like you know nothing about, and then you see a tree just have assault, a assault a person. One thing I will say, um, I I will appreciate about this scene and it has nothing to do with like the, the actual visual of it um but like you you think of the concept of demonic possession yeah right it's like a it's a um it's a violating and like overpowering thing mm -hmm. and it's probably one of the best ways to show it i hate to like i hate to say it listen but one, it is i mean i just love how like it can possess Things that aren't just human, right? Right. I do like how I can possess trees and all that jazz. Yeah. Like, that's a fun thing that I'm kind of glad that was, it was put in there. But I, I really didn't need to see. No, yeah. It was old... definitely more graphic than it needed to. I mean, it, it really was Good idea. Good idea, though. Yeah. I, I, and that's where I think there is charm to this movie in the sense there is style. It, sometimes. 
Sometimes the style is like, you know, walking with your new platform shoes, and then sometimes you're walking through the sand with your platform shoes, and you fall on your face. And I will say, I know we're talking about Evil Dead, the original. Yeah. And I think at one point we will watch more, the other ones. Yes. But I do think that a lot of people are very fond of the sequel, especially compared to the first. I know, like, the first has its following, don't get me wrong. Right. But I think a lot of people like the second one, because what I've heard is the second one is more comedy-focused. Like, it really goes all out with the blood everywhere and like the comedy and you know this is the start of the franchise so it makes sense for all these characters to be you know more serious and be like what's going on but you know bruce campbell's going to come back in the sequel and you know this man's right. already done this so you know he's just going to be like so he's going to be no cares given let's go in a way i would like in the, i mean that's any final curl that survives until the next movie isn't that kind of how it goes? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, no, and I'm not and I'm not saying that to negate what you're saying. I'm saying like that's like what you want. Yeah, that's like yeah, you which want is good. The, you want the person to come back and be better than ever. Yeah, but I think the thing is is like, from my understanding, is it has a huge tonal shift to yes. where like the sequel is really really over the top funny, you know, a little wacky. This one, though, it has funny moments and is wacky at some parts. I I feel like not all of the ones that are wacky in this first movie was on purpose to be wacky. right and, you know that, what I mean? and that's where i want to i want to pose this question well this is kind of like an overall review of evil dead while also talking about the potential of the sequel okay um let's say friday the 13th the first movie right mm -hmm. not an amazing film but you see where that cult following came from yeah and okay i just want to put out here before you continue it's really weird because like it's hard to rate these on an actual good level or like talk about stuff like this sometimes because we're just not used to like what used to come out back then, right? Oh no, it's I, I, I know, know. I know. yeah, it's just, you know what I mean because it's the seventies, the eighties. Like like I was telling you when we were watching this movie, you know, we watch things from the nineties and the nineties stuff holds up very well most of the time. Definitely a lot more contemporary. You than... watch a seventies, eighties movie and you're just like you're hit or miss. Yeah. You know, sometimes it gets pretty whack or cheesy, you're stupid or it looks bad. Yeah. And you know, with budgets and CGI back then and stuff I mean, like that, of course it makes sense. Horror movies infamously now are like, hey, we get the shit budgets. Now, I can only imagine what it was well, like back, back, back then. then. Yeah. So But it's know. it's fun to see like even with all those things like being low budgeted and you know kind of like not seen as like the main genre of movies. Right. It's fun to see what creativity comes out of these things. And no matter how much we harshly like rate or like low we rate like movies from the 70s, 80s, like any of the movies we rate that are like older, I want to give all of them credit for like being iconic and bringing oh, the, the stories to life and you know Nowadays, heck, we got like Scream, we got, um, you know, Chucky got a TV series. Uh, there Halloween must be a back. reason that yeah. there's five Evil Dead movies. Yeah. Like, for I mean, sure. it's definitely, you know, it wasn't a fluke, mm -hmm. clearly. And, and um, I just, I really, I think, I think the best way that this podcast can do justice to that, I, the idea of what you're saying of like movies of their time, yeah. right? Is that ultimately we are reviewing for an audience today like i mean at least that's how we're viewing it i mean yeah we're like viewing it. in today's era so, like is it like how well does it hold up in right. current era like yeah, we're, so, we're watching but almost like, retrospective type look back situation but it's fun because i like to cut i don't know how you do things when you rate and go through your head but with these type of movies i do cut it a little bit of slack because of how old it really is but at the same time Oh, I'm not giving this movie a one. Oh yeah, I know, oh, I know. Hell no. I'm just, I'm just not even just for this movie in general. I'm just talking about like if we do other older, older movies, you know. I just, I don't know. I think it's fun just to look back on them and then like I don't fault them for being cheesy or like fault them for not having a good budget. I just wanted to put that out there. Oh you know? no, definitely because. not. But yeah, sorry. Um, you know, I just wanted to talk about that. Go ahead, what you were talking about, so if you even remotely remember. I, I do, I, I do. Um, okay, but the idea of bringing up. Um, you know, Friday the 13th, and I don't want to say Halloween necessarily, or Aliens, other movies that I like of a similar time frame, because those movies felt more sequelized in the sense that they were set up for a sequel. Mm -hmm. um, where this movie, I mean, obviously there's always room for a sequel in these type of films, but they don't need to have one. It, like, it's wrapped up pretty well. Yeah, and plus um, it kind of ends in a way where... 
Yeah, you I think could, that Bruce Campbell was dead but, anyway. Yes. So, um, but I guess my idea was that this movie, knowing what we know about the tonal shift of the rest of the series, at least until Evil Dead Rise, mm. um, which there's funny moments, but it's it's similar in the sense of how you would laugh in this movie, except in this movie you're laughing at the movie, where in Evil Dead it's more like. That's goofy, but I just know that the thing I'm laughing at would turn around and kill me in yeah. a heartbeat. Uh, but I guess with the idea of the tonal shift of the series, in retrospect, what do you see in this movie that demands a sequel? Because, honestly, I, I mean, don't see it. I, I'm kind of there with you. I don't like, really think... That we laughed at the movie. We didn't laugh with, with the it. movie, yeah. you know? So, I, I'm glad... Yeah, I was going to say, we're, I'm definitely hyped that we, you know, went onward, and especially right. with how many good things I've heard of the other series. Right. I think this movie was okay, but I I don't really, if I would have watched this back then, I'm thinking if I was back then, if I was watching this, I would have been like, all right, it was a great movie. But then I would have been like, cool, it was one and done type of thing. But I mean, there's always room for sequels and onward. And like I said, I'm glad that we got it because... You know, yeah, we got some good quality content, at least from what I've heard, plus Evil Dead Rise that we've watched. Right, yes. And I don't know. It, I, I'm kind of with you there that from what we saw just now, I don't really see why they would have brought it back, but... Grateful it happened, but yeah. I don't necessarily understand that. It was or, wrapped up. Yes, yes. And I don't know. Is, is there a certain way you would like to take our thoughts going forward... Um, with you know, with your thoughts of the movie, is there a certain thing you'd like to focus on? If not, I know my biggest criticism and also my biggest like positive of the movie go hand in hand. Listen, man, you can say what you want to say, and then if I have anything, I'll bring it up. All right. So Sam Raimi is the director of this movie, naturally, and uh, this I'm not officially sure how early on into his career this is, but this has to be pretty early and definitely the kind of beginning of his being known for horror, in a way, right? Mm -hmm. So, knowing what I know from other movies that I've seen, whether it be Doctor Strange 2 or Spider-Man movies, which, I can't lie, that's pretty much about it for me. Um, th I, there's one other one. I can't think of what it was, but it was definitely an offhanded one. Um, but between those movies, I always remember people saying, oh, this is a horror director, and this is how a horror director can bleed into comic book movies. And those shots and the whimsical nature of how Sam Raimi does his like filming is always really cool. But knowing how I know that he does things, you can definitely tell he's a bit more of an amateur in this. Uh, at least, you know, being earlier on in his career, you see shots, like, you talk about the, uh, like, the deadite type of, like, Classic. possession Classic. I actually, viewpoint earlier on. I like on. that. I don't, I don't know if you like it, but I like it. I like it in concepts. It's very, like, if you see that shot, you don't see that shot anywhere else. When you see that, you think of Evil Dead. At least I do. I guess. I don't know. To me, I just, I feel like there's plenty of movies where I've seen from the perspective of whatever is haunting or you know doing that not so much haunting I, I i will say usually it's more of a creature feature type situation okay but where do you think they got it from maybe see maybe i don't know however it's, it's one of those things that like i it's inventive i just don't think it was done to its um best of its highest ability. quality at this point in time so like i said it's it's good in concept it's an it is. I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, what takes me out of it? Where there's scenes like that, or mm -hmm. like the quick cuts in the car, where you know you see the, you know, the driving back and forth, and you get the close up of their faces reacting. My favorite, the one that threw me off the most was the, um, the one on Ash. I don't even remember what was happening. Yeah. Turn. <laughs> yeah. I just, yeah. That, like, oh that was good, and it really accent accentuated his, um, his unibrow that he had. Yeah. And, why? You know, he probably should have. Probably should have got rid of that. A little bit of the uh, middle part there. I, it's completely just off subject from anything you just said. My naturally. favorite part of this movie yeah. is just Ash being in the back like. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. He's just back there for like 10 minutes in the background just with like an axe or whatever. Just You need to give that man a break. He just got thrown into two bookshelves. 
Okay, so <laughs> it's so good. May, maybe just, just honestly, the most of the movie up until the half or like the end half of the movie, you think that the other guy character is the main character because I, of, you would think uh, that because he's out here actually like dismembering the one de- person. Right. Yeah. What was that person's name? The first one was it? Shit. Sh- Shelly? Cheryl? The, the first one that got dismembered? Yeah. Well, there's... I think it's Shelly. Right? I just remember... Because there's uh, Shelly? I just remember... Shelly? Linda, and then Cheryl. So, Shelly. I think. So I, Probably. Yeah, yeah, because Sherry, Sherry's the one that's in the... Sherry's... Attic, yeah. right? Cheryl? Sherry? Shit. Listen, <laughs> I <don't... laughs> all I know... Linda's in it. I know she laughs. <laughs> all... All I know is that what was funny, like actually funny, yeah. is uh, Ash when uh, the other guy character was like beat up when he came back because of the trees bodying mm-hmm. him, and he's just like laying there bleeding, dying, and then just pouring the drink. <laughs> yeah, he's pouring mouth. the drink. He's like, and it's, it's like coming out the sides. It's, of it. I love it because Ash is just he's like, it's okay, we're all gonna get there, we're all gonna get out, go home, we're gonna be safe. Yeah. He's like, and even uh, Sherry, Cheryl, whatever her name was, and then he's like, well, maybe not her because <laughs> the one who got dismembered. <laughs> There again, there's there's little bits of yeah, like the, you could definitely see the seeds planted for the comedy part, and yeah. then as I've heard, the sequels where it sprouts really, yeah, really highly, where the over the top wacky let's get done kill and, things, and, and I'm excited, I'm excited and, um, for that too. But I've heard Army of Darkness is probably the best one. I don't know if you're memeing. I, really I actually don't. I, I like. I don't know. My, yeah. my cousin said that he really liked that movie. And then you just told me that most people didn't like that or something. No, no, no. Just the ti- just the title. Oh, I thought yeah. I thought you were just just because it should have been Medieval Dead. I understand. See, when you said that, I thought you were meaning like because <laughs> the movie's mid. mid. No, 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 okay. no, no. Medieval no. Dead. I medieval gotcha. Medieval Dead. <laughs> yes. You made the so Mountain anyway. Dew jump. <laughs> what? You made the Mountain Dew jump. <laughs> But wait, is it a dead eye? Oh my god! <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> I think this is like the most hype we've been for we, a podcast, and I think it's because it's well, just so funny. It, it, this is an interesting. Yeah, I mean, this is the energy we need every this single is one. Everyone, and um, even when we're recording at three in the morning, absolutely, child, we be pro- damned. We probably can't be doing that because no Cre- creature feature upstairs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but. <laughs> How do I want to round about back, just a little bit back around to my, um, you know, the cinematography things there. Oh, so later on in the movie, there's really cool effects used. I think most of the practical effects don't look that good. Like the deadite stuff. Yeah. That doesn't look and so good. I, but then there's the stuff like the ankle. Yeah. That doesn't look bad. Well, it's funny because like, you talking about the pencil? Yes. So the pencil and the ankle, when it first went in there, I'm like, yeah, it looks you know, not very good. But then when they started like they twisting started, it and like, going in, I'm like, like, like okay, <laughs> probably probably good for me. So, so like, yeah, like there's that give and take of quality when mm-hmm. it comes to certain things like that. And then um, I I do think I agree with the deadite specifically. I think they look a little off. It's weird because like you'll see them turn, and like one of the questions we were asking is like, why did that man's hair turn gray for no reason? Right. You know, there's there a certain change. Heck, even the, the girl that goes in the cellar. Yeah. Like right when they like she whatever they when they're hitting her, her down. There, that she, looks, just looks like a different person. That was just not. And then back when they show her again, it looks you know she's got the same elongated nose, which the actress had. Um, but that doll was not. Yeah. Based off of that actress whatsoever. Yeah, it was different. It was definitely weird to see like their faces change to like a completely different person. Yeah, and I mean, you could say like, oh, you know, it's just because it's a different person. You know, demon took over and transformed or whatever. But like, no, uh, it went back to being correct in a later shot. No, not quite. Yeah, not, I no, sir. <laughs> I don't know. I what I do want to say for the deadite stuff is I really liked the uh, the girlfriend, um, like. Like Ash's girlfriend, the uh, the Is one that Linda? laughs. Linda, yeah, yeah. I really like that one because I really like the scene where like she's just sitting there just laughing. <laughs> Are you talking about when he just beats the shit out <laughs> of her? Like, mm, See, that's mm, like almost like uh, I don't want to can... say physical comedy, but it's just so out of nowhere. Yeah, and that's and, and that's like, funny. And that's what I'm saying. Like that type of stuff is what I hear is what the rest of the series really upgrades and like implies on. Yeah, and that's why I'm curious to see these other movies, but. 
I, I really like that back and forth before even that. Like when she starts laughing and you just hear in the background and he's just like, shut up, shut up, shut up. And then like shut when she transforms up. back into like the normal person, like the normal girl. He's like hardly even reacting to her. He's just like, yeah. And like, oh, don't when, worry about it. Yeah, when she turns back to normal, it's like, oh, you know, I don't want to be like that anymore. I want to be safe. And then he like kind of like hugs her and stuff. And then you just, I love this. You just hear in the attic. That girl that's down there turns back to her normal vo- normal voice. Yeah, and she's like, "Yo, can you guys get me out of here?" And he's just like, oh. "Who is that's his sister?" Yeah, so, apparently. Yeah, um, that you literally only find out from that one sentence. I, I feel like that might have been like an offhanded thing in the beginning. I might have missed because that's egregious to have not. You, I, I will, I will bar myself. Like, I'm not going to say that as a criticism because that's so big of an issue. I feel like I have to have missed an offhanded line somewhere. I mean, I didn't see it. I, I, I didn't know it was, we could have missed. Um, I, even if it was the only time it stated, it doesn't really matter anyway. I don't yeah. think it really matters. But Ashley didn't beat up about it. Yeah, he didn't care. Like, yeah. you know. um, what do we feel about a chainsaw not being used in this movie? Not officially, no. Because he was going to. For the well, girlfriend, he was going to dismember her, and then he just didn't. Well, think of it this way. This is a little the, tease. little tease. Yeah, this little is tease. the first of the franchise, so there's not like a, an expectation I know. I know. for a chainsaw. But with, but with us going back and watching this later on, not with just... It was evil, surprising. Yeah, yeah, as I'm saying, I always thought that like the chainsaw and the double barrel and all that like yeah. was all of, all of the... It even wasn't like even the, a double barrel. It was just a single. Yeah, it was just a single. Yeah. Even like the hand cut off and the chainsaw, like all the stuff that I know about Evil Dead, I thought was staples in the original. And then you find out that, like, none of that is even in the nope. original. <laughs> yeah. So that really makes me wonder, like, was the sequel really that much better? Because, like, it seems like that's where, like, all the stuff comes from. Yeah, is, like, all the, the sequel onward. All the pop culture knowledge we would know. Yeah, it's from the other ones. Yeah. Which is interesting to, like, go into this movie thinking of all these things and then literally not, none of it. I mean, the book was there, but that's about, yeah. like, the only thing. And I don't even think this movie even said the word dead-eyed either. Yeah. I mean, as far as I, I remember. You know... It would make sense, though, if you say if you think of it from the essence that this is his first encounter. Yeah, I know. And this is also, you know, Evil Dead Rise was also their first encounter. So when Bruce comes back, maybe that's when he's coined the term. Yeah. Or when he finds out more and, religious scripture stuff about it, but, where that is the term. But like I'm saying, I'm not saying like that as a negative or like saying, oh, this should have had this because at this point. This it's movie, just surprising. It's just interesting to me because yeah. like, the things that I know about it weren't. A staple in the beginning right you know yeah. what i'm saying like i'm not saying that oh i should have had it because back then this was the first one that stuff right. wasn't even existing so it's like whatever I, just interesting yeah I, I i fully agree um there um <laughs> there's definitely a lot of cool stuff when it comes to you could see like maybe they were thinking oh well next time he's actually gonna do that that's gonna be a really cool thing next time uh but I, I just I really enjoy this last third of the movie. Yeah, I agree. I, that's like my favorite part. It's like the end, and not just because like you know a lot of times the end is where it gets crazy, but I think yeah. the end was the most creative. Yeah. Well, we had the mirror scene, which turned to water. Yeah, he like puts his but, hand in there. Yes, that was so cool. That is Sam Raimi mm-hmm. to me. That is so cool. We also like. You could definitely tell, I think, what they did with the, like, after the book is burned. Um, and you could almost tell that it's like a stop-motion blowtorch is what they had to have done and burned away whatever, you know, substance yeah, they were using. You see all of it, like, disintegrating, basically, and yeah, coming and it, apart. I thought that looked so cool. Yeah, I thought All up great. until the tongues came out. That was just a little too much for me. Even the book did it. He's like, oh. Yeah, that, that looked too claymation for me. But when it was just, like, burning away, and which was mirroring the burning of the book, that looked really cool and very unique. Um, yeah, I, I like that part a lot, too. Yeah, I, um, I like that. And another scene I really enjoyed or i thought was like a funny i don't know if this is a reference to ghostbusters or if ghostbusters is a reference to this probably the other way around i don't remember which when did ghostbusters come out oh my God, you're the wrong guy <laughs> okay well there's the scene with the cards with the emp thing where it's oh. like in ghostbusters i uh, <laughs> listen i just wanted to say that that card scene in general was cool because like First of all, it's funny that like she was guessing the cards were completely wrong, and then the other girl's like, "Yeah, you're so right. That's crazy." Yeah. But then when they actually like have because this is the and first time the dead eye. This is the yeah. first time that the dead eye you even know is controlled by the. Oh, well, before you know the dead eye is controlling someone because this is the first time you see the encounter of 
it being controlled. Right. Because they're just sitting there doing that car thing, doing that. And then the other person, the one who's possessive over by the window, they're just like, seven yeah. of hearts. The queen of, you know, spades. Yeah, like, going. <laughs> it's like, oh. Yeah. I, I like the introduction of uh, the possession there. That was really cool. Yeah. Instead of, like, your classic, like, <laughs> or, you know, mm-hmm. getting possessed like that. Like, it was just, like, instant randomly out of nowhere, this person's possessed. Yep. Liked it. I liked the... I liked all that setup right there. So I'll give them that too. I agree. Um, I think my favorite scenes was the one you said, the one we just talked about, and the one I talked about a little bit earlier where he's just slapping the girlfriend in the face and like the <laughs> laughing. That whole scene was awesome. Well, even after she's been stabbed and later on, and he's dragging her over the guy's body and her <laughs> head just thumps. Like there's so much disrespect put on this girlfriend in this movie. It's so... It's, it's it's comical. It's not funny. It's comical. I mean, it's it's. <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's like great. I said, it's great. Are, there's a lot of staples in this that definitely you can see why people like this movie a lot. Yeah. And especially if they grow up, grow on these things that are planted in this original film, you can definitely see why it's a beloved series. And it's one of the most, if not the most popular, like you know your side b horror movie kind of thing right right like your slapstick horror films like it's up there as one of the big ones yeah i um because it's not really a slasher so i don't want to say slasher but like yeah yeah it's definitely more of it but, fits more in line with like poltergeist and different haunting type films yeah i was gonna say it's definitely overall. not a slasher because it's not just no. like a person going around like Ooh, killing you yeah. killing you axing you axing you like definitely paranormal stuff here and right i don't know uh, I don't want to say it because it's a spoiler for said movie. So I'm just going to... I was going to ask something, compare it to like the new Evil Dead Rise movie. Yeah. But I don't want to put any spoilers in here for people who haven't watched the new movie. So Probably a good call. Never mind. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. You got, you got anything yeah, that you absolutely. want to talk about? How did you feel about the pacing of this movie? Like I said earlier, I feel like the first half of the movie was kind of slow okay not a lot of not a whole lot going on but once we actually get said girl and seller with the dead item there it sped up a little bit and on in that direction i was actually okay with the pacing onward yeah it's not a super um it's not a super long movie yeah at all it doesn't feel like it's a long movie either even even the part that was slow it wasn't slow to the point where it took like fucking two hours to get to said interesting stuff it just felt yeah. like driving up there and like oh yeah you know you have the girl drawing on the paper and then draws like the book by like the wind or whatever it was going, like deadite yeah. or whatever was controlling it to where she drew that you know you have the little scene with like the flirt of like ash and his girlfriend right. where he's like pretending to be asleep and then when she looks away he's like yeah you weren't really paying attention to that point there, yeah. there's a scene where uh he has like the necklace and the gift box next. which is what saves him in the end and he's holding it and like she wants to like obviously take it and look and see what's in it and every time she looks at him, he pretends to be asleep. Any time she looks away, he's like, "Well, you know, that's <laughs> that's that's what happens at the end too. That's what she does to him." Yeah, I know. As the it, it's yeah. interesting nod because when uh, he's digging the grave, yeah, 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 which was really interesting. And then of course the necklace comes back to being what helps him drag the book back and throw it back into the fire. Yeah, but the necklace is also the reason he didn't dismember her. He was getting ready to. And I know. He saw the necklace and he's like, <sighs> "I know." <laughs> It, it honestly it's pretty interesting it's, it, it small stuff like that really cool attention to detail mm-hmm. um how do you feel about okay so evil dead rise takes place in an apartment building and then this one takes out the, like and, your it, classic and this is your cabin classic in the woods. cabin in the woods uh-huh. how do you feel about the setting maybe not just comparing it to evil dead rise but just in general with this kind of thing uh you know do you feel like it was enough do you think there could have been more of something there? Yeah, I, you know, these type of movies, I think, just like the newest one being in the apartment alone, basically, I think I prefer these type of movies to kind of be taking place in just a single you know, a single area. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I mean, maybe the other movies do that and they could do them well, but the ones I've seen so far are all confined, right? And I think it builds the tension for that to where, like, you're not able to go anywhere, which, I mean, in this one, even in this one, though, they can't really go anywhere because the trees are being controlled and the bridge is, you know, down. Right. So they can't really go anywhere or else they're just going to be assaulted by a tree. Yeah. So, I mean, in my opinion, I'd rather just die from, you know, whatever instead of getting assaulted by a tree. I don't know about you. That's fair. <laughs> I, I do wish 
Um, I don't know. What do you think you would have liked it if they would have went elsewhere, or do you do you like the whole confined in the? I think it's iconic to have just a single area. I think it's more yes. iconic to have a single area than be like, oh, we're here for like half the movie, then we go somewhere else. Right. No, I I agree. I think the cabin as a setting is really well done overall um i i don't think it kind of grows its wings until like the second half as we talk about when it's more refined like i need to stay in here or i'm going to die Mm -hmm. uh but i think the outside i think the outside could have been done better yeah it not even so much that (laughs) we needed more of it but just the sense that i don't know i just think the shooting of it and everything when I talk you about amateur the, shots, you remember the shooting where uh, where she's running? No, 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 no. Oh, when, when he's walking. When he's walking down, yeah. because like they're trying to check the bridge out so they can take the one girl home because the one that got uh, you know very bizarre. <laughs> the way it, it was weird because it looked like he was walking sideways down a hill like this. Yes, they were like, huh? <laughs> I and then I I don't understand. But when they're walking back and it, and it shows from behind the car, yeah, it's fine. Walking straight up, just fine. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand that to this day. <laughs> <laughs> to this day. Uh, to this day. <laughs> you watched it literally like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> I was there, Gandalf. I was there when... <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. There, listen, know. there's good shots. There's questionable shots. Okay. Can we at least agree that the shots that both probably added a lot of like character to this movie oh, and, yeah. and mild charm, but... In my opinion, the worst shots of this movie were pretty much all of the zoom-ins on a character's face. Whether it be a deadite that didn't look good with practical effects. Or just or on your character's one that of are these, alive. One of these actors that honestly just wasn't really... It was their big break, and they were... Yeah. They were swinging. They were swinging. They, were, they might have been striking out, but they were swinging. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that was a good shot, though. I love that because, like, <laughs> you just well, and then they go bonk. <laughs> I, I, everything about this movie makes me happy. Listen, there's some charm here. That's all I'm gonna say. There, there actually is. I don't know. It's interesting because when watching it, I'm just sitting there like, oh man, some of this stuff is yikes. But in the end, now that we're talking about it, I'm not gonna rate this like a ten out of ten. No. But I, there's some stuff here that I like. Like, with stuff that we've been talking about, of course. But, I don't know, now that we're, like, I'm thinking about it more, I think I'm starting to like it a bit more than, you know, more than I would hate it, right? Really? So, yeah, I think so. Um, see, we, we've talked about it, and I, I've definitely, I understand some of the charm. Yeah. And, like, I do, I really do, and that that's points in my book. And another thing that I haven't fully articulated is that... Um, like Sam Raimi and that developing like directing style, like the interesting shots throughout the movie, or like the one uh, something that's actually mirrored in the new Evil Dead, like where there's a close up shot and with also something framed that's farther away, but they're both in focus. Oh, you're talking about when they were walking outside. Incredibly cool shot. Yeah, yeah, there's shots where like the the camera specifically moving with something. The moving camera shots in this movie are really. Creative, they're very, very creative. Like when he's dragging Linda at the yeah. end of the movie, mm-hmm. and like, um, you know, it's it's panning across as he's dragging her, and then it stops right when it's looking at the hatch to the cellar, and like you don't note. I don't know why. Maybe I just didn't notice it first, but like, good old uh, you know Sherry Cheryl's down there. She's like peeking her head through, but she's not really moving. So you didn't. Yeah. You, it's not. There's no movement calling the human eye to look at it right away, but then you're just like, oh, wait, that's a face I'm looking at. And then she starts going, rah, rah, you know, whatever. So, like, I think the directing, not directing, but, like, the cinematography of this movie does the best it can for a horror because that's something we haven't really talked about this movie, but this movie doesn't have a scare factor to it. Oh no, it's not I don't scary think it does. At all. I, I and don't that's think it one, does. that's what I'm saying. I think that's one of the negatives that I'm going to be like looking for this movie is that you know this one specifically doesn't try to be funny. You know what I'm saying? Like there might be moments, but 
again, I've said this 50 times already in this podcast, but the other movies from what I'm aware of, they, they want to be funny. They right. try to be over the top. But this one, I feel like, tried to set a tone of being a little bit more, try to be a little bit more scary and try to bring that scare factor in. And I think that didn't work here. I think, honestly, the reason they went with the more over-the-top comedy stuff is because that was what people liked about this movie when it, when it was there. Right. I right. don't think this movie scared anyone. I mean, it might have, you know, and if, if it did scare you, cool, you know, but it didn't scare me. If you're like... And there's not really any tension either, you know? Yeah. Like, is there... If, if you're mid-50s right now, if you were like four years old when this movie came out, let me know if this movie scared you. You know, when you're a younger, like, young kid, I could see it being scary. There were, oh, speaking of the rating of this movie, PG-13, by the way. Yeah, that's crazy. We seen a tree assault a girl, and that we right saw, there apparently is a PG-13 we, movie. We saw a tree way. <laughs> we saw a booba. There was a booba. Was there a booba? There was a booba. I saw, I saw it in the tree way. Um, oh, yeah. There was blood. Actually, there was two booba because there was, I don't think you were paying attention in this part, but when uh, Ash and her his girlfriend were like in that room, oh. you see her like take her shirt off and stuff. So two booba, actually. Uh oh. There was a <laughs> lot of blood, a little bit of oatmeal, a little bit of that, yeah, that, that white, yeah, uh, the white liquid. The white liquid, which the white liquid. makes a return in the new movie. The tree saplings. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, Think about it, this movie is a lot more connected to Avatar than you would think. Well, listen, all I want, I'm just saying, you haven't said it in this podcast yet, and you said you were going to. Do you remember the jokes you were slamming upstairs? About the, the tree stuff? No, just the movie in general, weren't you saying? Or was it the tree? It might have been the tree stuff. I just remember you were slamming jokes up there, and you were like, I'm going to say this for the podcast. Oh, yeah, one of them was the tree way thing. Okay, yeah. Cause it's That's like, what made me remember. There was something else that you said, but I don't it was. It was... It was Oh, they started a new family tree. Um, <laughs> he said he was going to say it. And I yeah, was like, yeah, that was that, that was those. Those were the jokes that I made. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have Comedian any other here. Professional dummy. Um, <laughs> I don't know. So it, I'm trying to think. We've talked. I've. I know we've talked a little bit about you know the the shots of the movie. We've talked about. Well, was there any emotional connection you had? Did you have any emotional any? connection to the characters at all? Was there anyone that made you sad when they died? No. <laughs> I think that's one thing that this movie didn't do very well at, is making you connect or really care about a character. Even Ash, man. No. I mean, we, we love Ash, right? I, I, but, I think I like unconsciously connected to Ash only yeah. because I knew he would be returning. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, this is a character I can at least associate with because I know I'm going to be seeing but, more. But in this movie... Even he's kind of irrelevant. He's just sitting there like, oh, no, God. Yeah. You know? And, you know, I get it. You want your characters to be... And he's not, a, you know, super awesome killing these things left and right because of his first experience with them. But I don't know. You watch other movies. You see final girls and final guys, I guess. Uh, final girls where it's at, though. You see them in their first movies. They fight back. They do a lot of stuff a lot right. of the times. I feel like Asher was kind of lacking in that there. He got there. Yeah, he got it there. Took, in the it took end. him a while, but took him a I just while. feel like even then he did a little, little too less than what I wanted to see. Yeah, but again, I think it might be because I subconsciously am thinking of Ash as a character who's just like chainsaw hand, Re right? You know well, well, I guess if we're gonna be talking about Ash a little bit, um, you know, outside of the other characters, which I think we should go ahead and do our final verdicts, then we can go into our final girl tier list. Yo, okay. How's that sound? I want you to do it though, because I think I talked what, Evil Dead. Verdict? Yeah, I think I talked Evil Dead Rise your final verdict first time. Okay, yeah, so yeah. So you, yeah. you that, do yours cool. on this one. So, um, okay, well, with you know Evil Dead Rise as our only recent and honestly only true example of what an Evil Dead movie could be, knowing that there is a tonal shift from Evil Dead Rise to the other movies we thought, but it also happens with this movie as well. Uh, this movie definitely puts a heavier emphasis on horror. However, I think that completely doesn't hit, at least with modern audiences and modern expectations. I think the framing of shots, while inter interesting and definitely intricate at time, do come off as amateurish uh, to a newer director. And there's performances that definitely, if these were actors or actresses we knew, I would say it's phoned in. 
But to me, it just doesn't come off as, you know, it just is, it is what it is. I think that Ash and the other male protagonist are the closest thing to... Standing out. Standing out. And that's just because they're... More vocal. Yes. They're more funny. They're, they, like I said, they have some one-liners or, you know, just some of the things that are the way they yes. act to things are different. Absolutely. All the girl characters, you're like... Cool. The actor. Okay, I will say this: the actresses when they go to their deadite forms. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, I mean, you could almost. No, no, it's nothing against like the actor or act. You know, it's no. nothing against the actors at all. I think the main problem was just the writing and like the part that they were given. There, they yeah, were just kind of. They were there to be turned yeah, into. Yeah, turned into. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and that really does show. So, I guess with that being said, with emotional resonance with these characters, whether that be you know flat directing. Even performance, I would say, and it could be a little bit. I just, I don't feel like this movie gave very much to justify wanting to watch it again, honestly finish it, if we weren't invested in it for one reason or another. And outside of a really good final third of the movie, um, I just don't know... I'm just, I'm curious. I'm I, seeing how low I, this man is rating I don't this. like, I don't, I don't. I know he's rating it low. I don't like this movie. Okay. But it does a lot to redeem itself in the end. Okay. Okay. So like, unfortunately, first impressions are a big thing. Fumbles. You know, it throws, it fumbles. Two yard line. I don't know, football. <laughs> <laughs> Sports. Sports. <laughs> yeah. Uh, down the bowling alley. Ooh, I bowl you. I fouled. Man. Uh, but uh, yeah, you go over the line. That's kind of cringe. Yeah, I do every time. But anyway, um, I I just I will give it. All right, I'll that it. it was an entertaining watch. Okay, but it lost me at points, and not just because I was busy with a child. There are points of this movie where I was laughing at it, not with it. And with that being said. I really do believe that The Evil Dead from 1983 okay. is, it's a 4.5. 4.5. 4.5. Out of 10, huh? Out of 10. I really, really, really had it at 3.5 for the longest Ooh. time. I did. Until but we, we started talking. We got to talking about it, and I was like, you know what? There is some stuff here that I enjoy well enough especially that final act that final third of the movie where ash is pretty much the only character that we're dealing with that's part great mm -hmm. and i can definitely see where that's going to be what you know pushes the series forward uh but a 4.5 out of 10 i think is probably the most generous i could be i definitely could see it being a four you could probably still argue a 3.5 but apparently the audiences disagree with me if imdb or whatever is anything Listen, to go all on. i'm saying is if there's some evil dead fans watching still right now oh you're getting chewed out i don't care man i mean i'm <laughs> and it's not because it's not what i expected it's it's just i don't think it brought that much to the table i'm glad there's more because i can see where there could be a little bit yeah like i like i said there's there's Seeds but rooted the, throughout. But you would think that if you're going to water something, you, 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 if you want to. If yeah. you want to water something, you want to see the sprouts. You don't want to just plant the seeds. Mm -hmm. Farming. <laughs> Farming. Agriculture. Uh, so, yes. So, with that being said, I think this movie is a 4.5. What say you, sir? A 4.5. You know what? Honestly, I, th I really thought you were going 3. All right, after we watched this movie, I was like, he's rating this a 3. I, I'm I, getting better at knowing what he's going to rank. Things. I never thought 3, 3.5 was where I was at. I was close. Yeah, you were pretty close. I'm curious as to what you think I'm going to rate this after I say it's what I rate. It's probably going to be like a 9. Like, oh, well, everybody loves this movie. So well, I have, my, I have my own brain. I can you know make my own opinion. <laughs> You're right. All right. Now, I, I will say that if I wasn't critically, critically, because I'm not really a critic, but if I wasn't talking in this podcast and looking at all these different things... I would have probably went out of it and saying, you know what, it was it was slow in the first half and you know it wasn't much there, but at the end I'd be like, you know what, it wrapped up. I enjoyed it. Fun, fun yeah. movie. That's usually how I watch movies. That's it. I'm like, cool, liked it. There's only like a select few movies that I don't like, so I will say I like this movie. Am I gonna praise this as a ten out of ten movie? No. 
I... I'm I, so scared. <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> okay. I agree with what you were saying, basically, to all of it. I do think that the end of this movie, with Bruce Campbell being the final girl, <laughs> that's the best part of the movie. When everyone else is basically dead and turned into our demon dead, I hear awesome i actually really like the interactions he has with all these characters and all of them kind of rushing him at once in a way yeah and like all of them turning against him loved it and there was a lot of stuff there to be desired and it kind of hit it on the head with some of the things there was some stuff that weren't in this movie that i wish were in there but i can't fault it for a lot of the things that i wanted to see because a lot of the things that i wanted to see are things that i knew from the other movies slightly that are in here, and that's fine because the other movies weren't made at this time. So yeah, I can't fault the, it. This for, was the predecessor. Yeah, I can't fault it for not having chainsaw kills or, you know, double barrels and stuff like that. Can't right. do that. I do think all the characters in this movie are literally lame, and I don't care about any of them. <laughs> and besides Ash, because yeah. Ash is, he's a classic. But at this time in this movie, he's not a classic yet. So, honestly, I gotta say, though, he's probably pretty relatable. Like, I'm just like, I feel like I would check out a situation like that. Oh, yeah, 100%. Because, like I said, the scene where he's just in the back like this for, like, 10 minutes, that'd be me. I'd be like, uh. <laughs> you know, kind of like a, he, Ash kind of feels like, not to, not to tangentialize too much, but Ash kind of feels like a horror video game protagonist. He doesn't say much <laughs> because you're supposed to put yourself in and their shoes. Yeah, in their shoes. And the way he falls over and gets hit by them goddamn shelves and stuff, might as well call him Ghostface. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're saying something that I understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, anyway, all the characters don't care about him. Literally, if you ask me what their names are in a week, I'm not going to remember. He doesn't know. I know Ash. That's all you need to know. Ash Lee. And. Uh, yeah, that is one thing that I never knew when we both found out. I'm Who's giving you an extra point just for giving me that. Oh, gosh. I'm so stupid. <laughs> uh, I think it does suffer, though, from the first half of the movie being very slow. Yeah. And the only interesting thing happening is seeing a tree violate a person. And I didn't need to see all that. Yeah, no. The tree concept is cool. Like I said, I like that it can mimic and take over these objects like trees and such. But I don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to see that, man. <laughs> a little too far. Yes, definitely. But then after that, when you know she gets possessed at the card scene, there mm -hmm. love that scene. I love the scene with the gir the girl laughing, Ash's girlfriend, and him spiss slapping her all over the place. <laughs> Great. And then the ending, everything you talked about, the ending, fantastic. Loved it. Yes. So. <laughs> With the, it's, it's interesting because I'm kind of like half and half. There's a lot of negatives. There are a lot of positives. And this is a, a cult classic. So I'm going to have to rate it pretty high. No. All right. I'm just going to get to the point here because oh, no. we kind of already talked about everything that can be said about this movie because it was very short. <laughs> you rated it at what? Three, four, four, three, four, point five. Five. four, five, five, four, five, five, four, five. You know what? And when I rate these movies, I like to think, I, it, I don't even like think of it on a scale of 1 to 10 anymore. I just kind of think of what I rated all my other movies that we've reviewed. That's fair. And I kind of compare those. And some of them I'm blanking on what I even remotely said. I know what you said for Nope. That movie's... I'm going to give this movie a 6. A 6. 6. I'm not, I'm not going to go higher than that. I think that The Evil Dead Rise was a much better movie in tone. <sighs> And like, uh, not That's just tone, good. but the fact that there were stakes on the table, and like these characters in Evil Dead Rise, you kind of cared about. And, yes. You know, you had an emotional attachment, and that's a big factor that's missing in the original Evil Dead. I don't care about these characters when they die in turn. I'm like, that's cool. Yeah. You know, there's nothing there, nothing to be desired in the characters other than Ash being a little little nerd. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's all that's yeah. interesting in the characters, and if your characters aren't strong. Why am I watching? You know? Yeah, I mean, I hear you. And that's why I'm curious to see these other movies because you know Ash is going to be way cooler. Are we um, are we doing that next? What? Are we doing another Evil Dead next? If that's what you want, I'm down to watch the way I Okay, the way I see it... The movie I did want you to watch, though, just because we watched the Happy Death Day series. Yeah. At some point, I want you to watch Freaky. Especially since both of you have not watched it. Freaky. Freaky. Okay, yes. That's that the, one's more of a comedy. That's one, the but... Vince Vaughn, yeah. Catherine Newton... 
That's that's another. That's more of a comedy than it is like a horror thriller. But it's a fun movie. I love you, Catherine. I've never met her. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, no, I'm I'm really interested. I, the way I, I think we could probably maybe hammer out the trilogy, if we wanted. I yeah. mean, if that's an interest, like I mean. I think Evil Dead's pretty relevant right now. I think yeah, it'd be sure. an easy thing to do. And like I said, even though we, I mean, you rated it way lower, but even though, like, I, I want even, to watch more. Yeah, that's what I'm knowing saying. what the even, series becomes. Even though that I rated it even lower on the spe- like the, the spectrum. spectrum here. Is that the word I'm looking for? Oh, yeah. Well, that's what why, I'm on. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why you said that. <laughs> I don't know. You, like, commented on it. That's the word that I'm using. I just, I was trying to finish your sentence for you. Anyway, the, on the level of 6 out of 10 here, it's lower for me still. Still, though, I I enjoyed a lot of stuff in this movie, but with the bad stuff with it, it makes me draw back. But yeah. knowing that the other ones are remotely a little bit different in tone, that's what, I think that's what's going to make me praise the series more. That's fair. Yeah. In I mean, my opinion. I, I agree. But I think I hear a lot of praise about the second movie, and I hear... The, this one's a little bit more mixed, but a lot of people that I see really like the 2013 reboot. Okay. And then the uh, medieval one, I don't, I've don't. i never seen like anyone talk about it other than my cousin being like, it was good. So, okay. That's it. Uh, I mean, I think at the very least, we could probably do two in Army of Darkness. Yeah. And then I think the reboot, maybe we could save for October. Yeah, another time October. We could, we, we could do that because we're going to start getting busy with like... I. He wants to do... I want to do indie, yeah. and that's pretty much all of the month of uh, May leading up... Well, no, June. All the all of June. So we pretty much have all of next month, or the rest of this month, I think, by the time this comes out. We'll watch the, so, yeah. the, we'll watch two movies, and if we have time, we'll watch Freaky, and then we'll go on. Hell with, yeah. yeah! That's the plan. That's, that, but, hey, there's a roadmap for you. There's a roadmap for you. And, and then on. honestly... With ending this out, let's do the final girl tier final, list. Final, let's do it. We're adding Ash. Final to this. person. Just tier because list. his name is Ashley is the main reason I want to do this. Yep. So, compared to our other final girls, yep. we have good old Sydney Prescott. We put Samantha in here. We put Samantha from the newer screen movies. Yes. We put um, Tree from Happy Death Day. The more I see her, the more, god dang, she's a queen, dude. Um, Samara Weaving's character, Grace. Yes. Love her too, also queen. And that's our right now our top three. Top is three is Samara Sid- Weaving. I, I mean, yeah, Samara, uh, Samara Weaving, Sydney Prescott, aka Neff Campbell, and, yeah, then Tree, and then Tree, aka Jessica. Those were our three. Yeah, like, up Sid- there. Sydney top. Yeah. And then uh, I, we debated on that. We, 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 we go back and forth. I personally think Tree is above. Yeah, I think Tree is above than Grace because Tree yeah. just her personality is awesome. Yeah. But I think, and then we ended up throwing uh, Emerald from freaking Nope in there. She, yeah. And then we ended yeah, she's up, in there. We she's, threw the girl from uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer. Yeah, she's she's bottom. I I made a veto. I said Emerald's at least above her, in my opinion, because Emerald didn't just scream the whole time, even though she was annoying. So, okay, we, with a kind of, and then above that was Sam just by default, because there's a pretty good list above her. Not that she's bad, but. Yeah, Sam's great. The top Sam's of awesome. the list. But like Sydney Prescott, Tree, and Grace, I don't know. That's they, they, those girls bring out the clutch. That's too good. So and with that being said, I think top three ain't touched at all by Ash right now. Oh no! But at this point, at this point, this okay. is with the first movie in mind. Okay, let me ask you this. Okay. So at when we officially finalized our list within the last couple episodes of Pop Corner, we are we taking all of. I mean, I guess we are taking all of the movies they've seen. It's just at the time we were looking at like Sydney as in a retrospect, yeah, because we'd already we'd already reviewed all the movies. Yeah. So as of this point, are we look, looking at Ash as only well, for I'm, the first movie? I'm kind of just looking at him, looking at him as the first movie right now because I don't really that's all know. I know. know much yes. about yeah. the other movies. So I'm right now. He's he's higher than um, I think he's I think he's uh, below Samantha. Third from the bottom. I'm putting him below Samantha. Yeah, I, I agree. I think we're right in the same spot. He's yeah. below Samantha, above Emerald, and, and above. Um, I don't even know her name. Girl from I know what you did last summer. It's there. It's it's right. It's like she's irrelevant, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it doesn't. You're right. Helen was clutching that movie. Jennifer Love Hewitt. But yeah, I, I agree. Right now, okay. I mean, maybe when we watch the other movies, we might bump them up a little bit. But right now, for me, I know you're gonna when we watch Alien and Aliens and stuff, you're gonna try putting your girl in this list. And I'm, I'm just saying, put them in a room together. Who's winning? <laughs> But right now, I don't think Sydney, Tree, and Grace is being touched for yeah, a while. No. They're clutch. <laughs> but 
Yeah, that's it. That's fair. No yeah. groovy in this movie either. No groovy. <laughs> um, not no. This is my boomstick. Nope. There's a lot of phrases that aren't in this movie either. So well, hey, style comes later, I suppose. But uh, yeah, so that has been episode. 13. 13. Of the Pop Corner Podcast. We didn't do a Friday the 13th for 13. We are losers. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> Alrighty. It's okay. I think, but, that, I think that's it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, I don't know. I will I, see you when we do episode 14. We will do episode 14, and that's going to be Evil Dead 2. Alrighty. And, uh, yeah. So that's been it for us. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, consider subscribing, and maybe checking out some of the other ones we've already covered all of the scream franchise uh we already said i know what you did last summer the first one we're not doing the rest um ready or not ready or not happy death day happy death day and then and happy death day to you nope and <laughs> if nope. you care about that movie if you care about that <laughs> you know weirdly enough on film twitter i see a lot of people liked it i don't understand i it. I, I, it. I don't understand it and listen if you didn't watch the yet like our nope review i love his other movies Yes. Yeah. Great. Yeah. No, there. Yeah. Well, we you forgot a see. movie. We watched old too. We did watch old. Poor what a thing. movie. What Poor a movie. thing. Yeah, go watch them if you're interested. If what, not, hey, then just call us losers in the comments. Where, and then, where, like, where is that sister and on our tier list <laughs> from old? I don't care about that sister. She doesn't even relevant. <laughs> but she's but she's better than the bottom two. I don't I'm, care I'm, about I'm, that. Kid. I'm throwing her in. <laughs> She's below Bruce. Ah, above the other. God did not like what you said. Oh, God. <laughs> he said, leave that person no. out of the tier list. Old girl. <laughs> Old girl. <laughs> Old girl. She's third from the bottom, below Bruce. Bruce is now fourth from the bottom. Uh, Ash. I mean, you know what I mean. You know what we need to do? Just so people can actually we, know what the fuck we're talking we about. We board. need a whiteboard. <laughs> Okay, that'll So, happen. like, we're not sitting here saying this, and they're like, dude, I don't know what your list is. So Yeah, you haven't seen the other ones. You're just lost. We're getting a, we're getting a whiteboard. Okay, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. All right, cool. Whiteboard. All right, well, guys, thanks for watching. That's peace, it. Peace, Yeah, bye.